Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. I'm coming to you from Siberia. I thought I would just shock everybody who's watching. Siberia! Well, you've, heard, you've seen me tape in front of this tree so many times that you don't know if this is a new program or not. This is a new manifest program because I've got a new shirt on. Yes. I'll tell you a little secret before I minister. I go buy a whole lot of new shirts before every Israel trip so people won't think it's a rerun. Because <laughs> how many times can you tape in one location in 15 years, okay? But today's a very serious message, and I'm going to give it to you. It's going to be a prophetic word. And I've titled this, The Seven Prince Spirits Controlling the World. The, and I'm going to talk about how these seven spirits are attaching themselves to the governmental leadership of America, the political leadership of America, even the Supreme Court leadership of America, and they don't even realize what's taking place. Now, let me talk to, to you about Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. There appeared another wonder in heaven, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. This is Revelation 13, one now. Uh, having seven heads and ten horns, then, then crowns, and upon the, his heads were the name of blasphemy. Now, we do know this. Let's start from the very beginning of the book of Revelation. We do know that according to the, the Revelation chapter 12, that there is something called the great red dragon. The word dragon there is uh, actually a Greek word for the word serpent. And so it's a seven-headed serpent. Now, where did this imagery come from? Because remember this, when John wrote the book of Revelation in his day, there was a whole lot of mythology among the Greeks and the Romans. And their whole mental concept was that of what we would call mythological creatures, etc. Now, God is not giving them a mythological creature for them to understand. However, in ancient Sumeria, not Samaria and uh, here in the West Bank, but Sumeria, who were the ancient people that lived in Iraq uh, about 5,000 years ago, 5,500 years ago, they found a fresco one time. Actually, it was a carving of a snake with seven heads. And so this imagery was known back among the ancient people. Now, in the book of Revelation, the dragon himself is Satan, but the seven heads of the dragon are two things. Number one, they are seven prophetic empires that were going to impact God's people, beginning with the empire of Egypt, which is recorded in the book of Genesis. The second thing you need to understand also is the seven heads of that dragon also represent seven principality spirits that Satan controls through those seven empires. Now, if you go into the Bible and you want to know what the seven empires were, they are the empire of Egypt, followed by the Assyrians, followed by the, Bab uh, the Babylonians, uh, followed by the Medes and Persians, followed by the Greeks, then followed by the Romans. And then the seventh head, I believe, is an extension of Rome that comes all the way into our day, which will eventually become a global government, which is what the entire world is trying to form now. They're forming coalitions. Now, most of you who watch me that keep up with the prophetic word and the prophetic, prophetic teaching that we do, already understands what, understand the six previous empires of prophecy and the one that's coming. However, what I would like to do is go through the history of these empires, and I want to show you the spirit that was controlling them, and you, you see if you agree with me that the spirit, the demonic power behind that empire is being released today, uh, not only in the world, but especially in our country. So here we go right now. Number one, the first empire to rule was Egypt, and the spirit of Egypt is the spirit of bondage. What it does, it is a leader who acts like a dictator, who tries to do everything according to his will, does not listen to anything God says, doesn't listen to anybody who's righteous, rejects the warnings that the righteous are giving concerning the decisions that, he, that the Pharaoh is making. And what Pharaoh does is he tries to harass and persecute the righteous 
righteous people of God. Now, look at this. I want to show you this spirit from a different perspective. Did you know, for example, that in the United States, we have an obelisk which is called the Washington Monument, which is an Egyptian emblem. Did you know when you flip your dollar bill over, you have a pyramid on the back without a capstone? That's the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is in the area of Egypt. We have Egyptian symbolism in the United States right now. But let's talk for a moment about the spirit of bondage. Pharaoh made the people work, and watch this, the United States since 2013 has passed 3,659 new regulations on businesses in America. We're being overly regulated to death. Number two, Pharaoh permitted and said nothing about the aborting of infants right after they were born. He had the male children born to the Hebrew women slain and thrown in the river. We now are aborting babies and selling body parts. When you take a baby that's still kicking and let it die to sell its brain and its body part, you are worse than a Nazi. And we have the same spirit that the Nazis had when they did experiments on the Jewish people back in the days of Germany. And I'm not afraid to say that because shedding of innocent blood, ladies and gentlemen, in Matthew 23 is what put this city under a curse. And that's why you've got stones toppled outside this wall that have sat under dirt since about a few years ago when they were excavated because the Lord said in Matthew 23, because of the shedding of innocent blood, destruction will come to the city. And if the United States and our lazy politicians who aren't worth much of anything, who won't take a stand for the unborn, don't straighten up and act up, you're going to see American cities toppled the same way that the city of Jerusalem was toppled in 70 A.D. Because you cannot shed innocent blood, read your Bible without coming under a curse from Almighty God, and that's for the United States as well as any other country of the world. So Pharaoh had the babies killed and said nothing about it. The third thing that we see that's parallel to America is Pharaoh appointed taskmasters. Now that word in Hebrew, are you ready for this, can be one that collects taxes. Well, what about that? Check this out. The U.S. tax code has 10,000 words to it. No wonder when you call three three IRS agents, you get three different answers because they're looking at a 10,000 page. Well, folks, the Bible only has 700,000 words. It takes you a year to read the Bible. Imagine reading a tax code that's 10 times bigger than the Bible. And then we wonder why everybody's confused about taxes and the tax code. My point is the spirit of Pharaoh in the spirit of Egypt is the spirit of bondage, and we see that spirit trying to seize America. Number two, what is the spirit of Assyria? The Assyrian spirit is real simple. It was the spirit of division. There were 12 tribes in Israel. The Assyrians invaded the land, and they took 10 of the northern tribes, took them into captivity. Judah and Benjamin, and Judah and Benjamin, their tribe is right here where we are right now. The tri- the tribe of uh, Judah is in this direction. Benjamin was the borderline of actually where we are now. These two particular tribes are the tribes, ladies and gentlemen, that did not remain in captivity. Now, I'm going to say something here. It'll be a little controversial if it's taken wrong. But everybody knows, it's not politically correct to talk about this, but the northern part of the United States and the northeastern part think different than the south does. The northeastern part is pro-abortion. The southern states are more conservative. The, the northeastern parts may be more pro gay marriage where the Southern people will be more conservative in traditional marriage. And so whether we'd like to admit this or not, just like the Assyrians came in and took the North one direction and took the South another direction, now watch this, and the Northern tribes got into idolatry through the tribe of Dan, but the Southern tribes of Judah remained faithful to the Word of God. We have a division in the United States that I call the spirit of the Assyrians, which is trying to separate the Northern ideas from the Southern ideas, more liberal, more conservative. How many know what I'm talking about. It's just a fact. We can act like it does not exist, but it does exist definitely. So the spirit of Assyria, and I'm talking about the seven spirits that are the head of the dragon, that are the seven principalities that are affecting the world and affecting uh, the nation at this point. Now, we come to the third spirit, and this is the third empire of Bible prophecy, and the third empire of Bible prophecy is the spirit of Babylon. And what is the spirit of Babylon? (laughs) You're going to love this one. The spirit of Babylon is the spirit of compromise. Now, when Daniel, who's a righteous man, he goes into Babylon, here's what they begin to do. Number one, the Babylonians attack the spiritual values of Daniel and his companions. Then they comp- to try to get them to compromise it. They tried to get them to compromise their, their belief in God. They tried to get them to compromise their prayer life. The first thing they did, did was try to offer them wine and meat sacrificed to idols, and Daniel had to refuse that. The second thing they did, if you read the Bible, is they tried to get a couple of these Jewish young men to bow down 
come before idols and worship an idol, and they refused to do it. The third thing they tried to do is they tried to tell Daniel, you can't pray. So if you can't pray, what we're going to do is stow you into a lion's den because you can't pray. Oh, hang on with me while I talk about this. See, these Hebrew boys were from the royal seed, and some of them had come out of an area where they had good training in the Word of God. But the spirit of Babylon attacks your training in the Bible. The spirit of Babylon is a professor at an Ivy League university, or for that matter, any university, who looks at a Christian kid and said, you're an idiot for believing God exists because God doesn't exist. We have a whole spirit in America uh, which is trying to get believers to compromise who we are, compromise what we believe in. They're trying to attack us. Pray. Look, there was a day I remember, I remember growing up in school, maybe I'm dating myself, where we prayed every morning and read a Bible story. Then some nut came along and decided they didn't like it, and the whole United States, including the Supreme Court, submitted to a nutty woman who was an atheist and took prayer out of school and Bible reading out of school, and now we've got an entire generation that don't even know who Adam and Eve are. You they think Goliath is an NFL football team. I'm not kidding. They did a survey at a bunch of kids at a public school and asked them who was Goliath. They said, well, that's an NFL team, I believe, because they said he was a giant. Oh, yeah, the Giants. Yeah, that's a, that's a New York football team. What I'm saying is there's such ignorance, and at the same time, they're trying to get us to compromise. They're trying to get us to say this type of marriage is okay. This type of relationship with this person is okay. And so what are we going to do? Are we going to be uh, like, this is how most Christians are. Well, when in Babylon, do like the Babylon. I mean, you know, all the church is back there somewhere. They don't see me, so I'll go drink my wine and eat my meat sacrificed to idols, and I'll get down here. You know, I'll bow before the idol, but I'll pray to the real God while I'm doing it. No, it doesn't work that way. And so the Babylonian spirit is all over the place. It's a spirit trying to cause us to compromise, to brainwash a younger generation. But God has already said, I'm going to pour my spirit out on sons and daughters. Uh, and that might be one of the reasons God has raised up OCI and Warrior Fest and all the big things we've got going on is to teach a generation that when they tell you not to pray, I'm going to pray anyway. When they tell you to bow before an idol and say it's like every God, let me tell you something, every God is not equal. I hear this all the time. Was Christianity and this religion and that religion, are we just all equal in a path to God? Really? Are you kidding me? How come Pharaoh's ten idols could not stop the ten plagues of the real God if all gods are equal? You tell me how come, well, in Babylon, why did Nebuchadnezzar convert to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob if all gods are equal? Why didn't he keep the God that he had? Oh, you don't want me to preach this. I can take you to the Bible and show you where people converted from pagan heathen gods because their God couldn't hear their God couldn't answer prayer. Their God cannot deliver them. But we serve a God in Babylon. I'm going to talk, talk about Daniel's God is in Babylon. Daniel's God is in Babylon. Our God is still living. Our God is still alive. And we've got to be like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, not willing to compromise to a Babylonian spirit that tries to make us give up what we've stood for, what we've planned, what we believed all these years. Number four, I won't spend a lot of time on this because I could. The fourth spirit is the Grecian spirit. The fourth prophetic empire is Greece. That's human philosophy. In other words, uh, the, 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 the Greeks were so into wisdom and philosophical experience. And so this is what we see through our American educational systems of higher learning. Everything is about humanism. Everything is about you are the God. Everything's about you, me, you, etc. And so men worship wisdom and philosophy instead of seeking God's wisdom and God's ways. Number five, the fifth spirit is called the media Persian spirit. Now the media Persian spirit, which is the fifth empire of prophecy, how does that relate to us today? Here's how it relates to us today. The media Persian spirit is the spirit that Esther had to deal with in Persia when there was a man by the name of Haman. Now, this is real interesting. There was a man by the name of Haman who built 10 gallows to hang the Jews on. And those were uh, Haman and his uh, 10 sons. As you know, when Esther came to the throne and she exposed Haman's plan, Haman and his 10 sons were hung on the gallows. Now, if I go to the book of Esther, I've got a little CD I preached years ago called The Esther Code, in which I talk about how in Esther is encoded the story of the Antichrist. Haman is a picture of the Antichrist, and his ten sons are a picture of the ten kings that are going to be ruling under the Antichrist. Esther is a picture, oh, help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Her husband is a picture of the, of the king, and Esther is a picture, I believe, even of the, of the body of Christ. We could get into all this type of imagery here, but the point is the spirit of Medo, Media Persia is the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, we see the Persians rising today. Uh, we see the President Obama's giving them, you know, access to uh, uh, nuclear centrifuges, and everybody's warning the president that they're going to have a bomb, but we have a leader who only believes in what he believes in, obviously, because he takes advice from nobody, and so that that is similar to a spirit of Haman who is stubborn and says, I'm going to do it my way, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm just going to go ahead and say this. If you start messing with God's people, both the church who are really God's people and Israel, which is God's people, God will stand up and put on his boxing gloves the way he did against Haman and the 10 Kings. And what you intend for evil, God, God will turn that thing completely around. So the spirit of the media Persia, uh, Persia is the spirit of Antichrist. Now, I'm, I'm running out of time, but let me get to number six. This is really interesting. The spirit of Rome. What, what was the spirit of the Roman Empire? What I'm talking about here is I'm talking about the seven heads of the dragon and how the sixth empire of Bible prophecy is the Roman Empire spirit. Now, there's one word that sums up the Roman Empire. Now, this is so funny because this is so parallel to today day, and that's the spirit called tolerance. Yeah. Everything about Rome was tolerant. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Roman Empire was the greatest military empire on the face of the earth. Watch this now. They had a senate, they had a Capitol Hill, and their emblem was an eagle. Yeah. They were very liberal in social issues, uh, men with men, women with women, nothing wrong with that. And, and obviously they were, they were very liberal in abortion because a bunch of Roman soldiers came here and killed babies under two years of age. So let me say this. The United States spiritually has the symbol, symbolism and the pattern of Israel because they had 13 tribes, Count Levi. We had 13 colonies. They were divided between the north and the south uh, years ago. We were divided in the Civil War between the north and the south. It goes on and on from there. But our political patterns are very similar to the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire, this is so funny, so they're tolerant of all gods. I mean, you could put a god there, you could put a god over here, put a statue there in the temple, and nobody said anything. Now watch this, ready? They were tolerant of every religion except one called Christianity. Because, see, the Christians come along and they start doing things that the Roman government didn't like. Number one, they want to take Sunday, which is the first day of the week, read the book of Acts, and the Gentile Christians want to worship on that day, but to the Romans, that was another work day. Number two, ready for this? They would not call the emperor God. And when they refused to call the emperor God, remember in the book of Acts, these men are saying there's another God besides Caesar. When they would not call the emperor God... It sent them into severe persecution. Here's number three. Get ready for number three. Ready? Number three was when Christianity showed up in a city, it shut down the idol temples. And the idol temples where the money and the tax revenue was for the Roman government. Come on, help me, somebody. You'll get this in a minute. So in other words, when they go to Ephesus, and, and there, let's say there's a temple of Diana, and everybody gets converted because of the miracles of Paul, the Roman government starts going crazy, and they say, what are we going to do with the, the tourism is going to drop, the money is going to drop, and the tax revenue is going to drop. So really, Rome's tolerance against Christianity was not simply because of the beliefs. It was a monetary issue as far as the Roman government was concerned. So what did they do? They called Christians intolerant, and they began to persecute Christians because they said Christians were intolerant. Now, let me talk to you for a moment what I see in the United States. You always hear the extreme liberals talk about how conservative Christians are not tolerant. Okay? And what they're trying to do is have us to accept all their beliefs, which we cannot do because their beliefs are outside of the Bible. Most of them are. And it's what's really hilarious is at the same time they're crying that we're not tolerant, we're being attacked... A woman who, by, by her conscience, did not believe in providing a marriage certificate to a man and a man is put in prison in the United States of America because she's intolerant. And I'm going to tell you something. Tolerance, when you are tolerant toward the things that God calls an abomination, you have lost your character as a believer. And you'll eventually lose your country if you allow individuals to intimidate you, one thing about the men of the Bible, when they beat Paul for preaching the gospel and found out he was a Roman citizen and got afraid, you know what they did? They said, go out the back door quietly here. We're going we're to let you go. And Paul said, let me tell you something, boys. You didn't beat me privately, and I'm not leaving privately. 
You made a ruckus when you arrested me. I'm about to make a ruckus before I leave this town. And what they want to do, oh, don't let me preach this. I've only got a little bit of time. But what they're trying to do, listen to me very carefully, all of you here and watch me around the world. What the devil understands is this, that the authority that Jesus had, he left it to the believers and to the church. Amen. Our authority is released by our words. If they can intimidate us in America, make the preacher shut up, make the church members shut up, make us stay in our four walls and mind our own business, the enemy knows that if he can make us shut up, everything will remain the same and nothing will change. But when you read the Bible, Jesus said, all power or authority is given to me in heaven and earth and I give it to you. When we pray, authority to change things is released in the spirit realm. When we prophesy and begin to speak how things are going to be and how they're going to turn, it releases authority. The plan, and I hate to say this, of certain people in America is to do their best to shut the American church up, make us go behind our four walls, and never present a clear gospel message. But I got news for you. I'm going to tell you what Paul said. I am not going to be silent as long as I've got a voice to speak. Our people are not going to be silent as long as they've got a voice to speak. And we're going to declare the truth from what is not true. We're going to declare the life of God to the people of this country because we understand that when we begin to preach, the power of God is released and things can be changed. Let me tell you, oh my. See, the Bible says, the Bible says it's God that puts a king in power and it's God that can take a king out. And when you have people that are praying and seeking God, you'll discover, you'll wake up one morning and say, well, the man just passed away in the middle of the night. Nobody did nothing. They just passed away. God can raise you up, sir, and God can take you down and God can do it by simply taking the breath out of your body. That's how fast things can change. Herod persecuted Christians and he got eaten up with worms five days later. Another Herod killed the babies of Bethlehem and he died with worms at the hot bath of Jericho. Another Herod began to persecute. Three Herods died weird deaths because God came in and said, I'm not putting up with what you're doing to my people. You better honor believers. You better honor Christians in Syria. You better honor Christians in Iraq. You better honor believers around the world. Those who know Jesus Christ have a covenant with him, and it's time to honor those who honor the true and the living God. Amen. I tell you, I'm stirred up on manifest. And I hope that you'll be stirred up as well not to be silent in these days. I'll be right back in a moment. Don't go anywhere. After 40 years of ministry and over 100,000 hours of biblical research, Perry Stone has decoded an amazing pattern in scripture that is concealed in Israel's fall festivals, greatly confirming the pre-tribulation return of Christ for his church. Using the rule of divine order, prophetic patterns, cycles, symbolism, and lesser known Jewish history, Perry's landmark new prophetic book, Prophecies Concealed, Now Revealed, documents the following. New end time parallels of the days of Noah and Lot. Understanding why God sends judgment and what is the judgment of God. What are the laws of escaping the future judgments? Discover the amazing mystery of the missing 70 years. How King Saul reveals a pattern in the United States government. The hidden day as it is known by devout Jews that actually conceals a message about the rapture. Evidence of a prophetic generation and does one generation remain before the Messiah returns. Discover the triggers that will actually start the seven year tribulation. The missing key that is seldom taught, the coming termination of the church age. Answering arguments against the pre-tribulation rapture. Decoding the Yom Kippur Cipher, the festival with a double meaning. New evidence of a pre-tribulation rapture concealed in the fall festivals of Israel and much more. Perry's new book is accompanied with this CD album, America Wake Up, his two most recent prophetic messages about America in 2016. Preached at his recent Awaken America conference, the first message, America, Destroying Our Blessing and Our Birthright, exposes and explains in depth a strategy by both Satan and ungodly leaders to seize our national birthright. The second CD is titled, The Washington Harbingers, and will not only give a major update, but go into detail about a 1933 prophecy that is now coming to pass. Perry's new book, Prophecies Concealed, Now Revealed, and his two most significant prophetic audio messages for America in 2016 are available now as package offer PC119 for your gift of $30 or more. 
To order, call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323 or go online at perrystone.org. You may also write and enclose your gift of just $30 or more to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Your support helps keep Manifest with Perry Stone coming to you. We look forward to hearing from you soon. I promise you something. I want you to hear the entire message, how America is losing its blessing and birthright. And also get the book, Prophecies Concealed. It is, it is new. This is not a reprint of an old book. This is a brand new book, okay? I want you to get the book now. Order it now uh, by one 21 bread perrystoneorg or whatever method you have to use. As most of you know, we're coming to certain areas. Here's some places I'm going to be coming to. Wednesday, May 18th, Munster, Indiana, Family Faith Church. Come on and join us there. And that's going to be a great time Wednesday night there with Steve Muncy. Then we're coming to Redemption Church International for one of our conferences, Friday through Sunday, June 3rd through the 5th. 7 o'clock Friday, 10 and 6 on Saturday, 10, 30 and 5 on Sunday in Knoxville, Tennessee, Pastor Ed King. Florida Church of God camp meeting on Monday night and Tuesday night, June 5th and 6th in Waimama, Florida under the Tabernacle. Brother Keith Ivester, Bishop Keith Ivester is hosting that meeting, of course, a yearly meeting in Florida there, Waimama, Florida. Live Church, June the 10th through the 12th in Fenton, Missouri. Uh, all of you folks in St. Louis, it's going to be my only meeting in central part of the country, so come and join me at Live Church, June 10th through the 12th, Friday through Sunday morning. Three services on Sunday, by the way. Now, partners, all of the partners, if you're on the Message of the Month Club, if you're on the Partner Strike Force, and you support our ministry, you are invited to come to the Partners Homecoming. This is going to be off the chain. We've got Walter Hallam, Rick Shelton, Randy Caldwell, and myself preaching this meeting. It is a homecoming. It's a homecoming feel. So please get your rooms booked for the Partners Homecoming. World Harvest Church, Sunday, June, July the 3rd in the afternoon. Columbus, Ohio, we're at Rod Parsons Camp Meeting. Release the Roar Conference. And this will be geared toward uh, young people of all ages. Friday through Sunday, June 8th to the 10th in Maumee, Ohio. Evangel World Prayer Conference Center, our big conference there in Louisville, Kentucky, Thursday through Sunday, June 14th to the 17th. And don't forget Summer Reformation on Friday through Sunday, July 22nd to the 24th. Now, I want to take a moment to share something with you. When I was in Huntington, West Virginia in August of last year, the Lord gave a prophetic word, and it talked about that there would be people that would come from uh, cities moving toward the rural areas, toward the mountains, and there would be a revival breakout called the Rural Revival. In the state of West Virginia, there has been a great revival breakout, and it's, I'm, I'm hearing that it's starting to break out in other areas as well. And so I want you to pray for the great revivals that God is going to send. You hear me, ladies and gentlemen, God is up to something. Now, I may, I may be only praying about these meetings, and I may be just, I will come sometimes just to watch and see what God is doing, but I don't want to be left out of what God is about to do in the last days. And so I want to say something to you, all of the youth pastors from small churches, all of you that have just five and six and eight young people, you bring them this summer in the end of July to Cleveland, Tennessee, to OCI, to Reformation Release the War Conference that we're going to have. It is off the chain. Hundreds are saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and we're going to deal with depression, oppression, suicide, and deliverance on a generation that desperately needs it. So go to perrystone.org, ociministries.org, get the information, register there, no fee to attend. I'm excited about what God's about to do. So stay with me on perrystone.org and our Facebook as well, and keep up with us every day. God bless you. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2016 Israel tour. The dates are November 21st through the 30th with an optional visit to Petra in the country of Jordan. For more information and how to register, call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org. Seating is limited, so call today.